Okay, hey, Dave Travis here. I've got Dr. Stacy Spencer from New Direction Christian Center, Memphis, Tennessee area. And Stacy, uh, at our conference at I three, you talked about zigging where you should have zagged, or zig and zag. So where have you guys zigged and zagged in the last five years? Well, you know, that concept is still very fresh in, in my heart, and we have since that time uh, taken upon ourselves to go into the community to do some redevelopment. Uh, and I think five years ago, I was talking about this town center concept. And so we, we still kept with the town center concept. But one of the things that we've added to that is a workforce development piece. Because one Sunday, I, uh, I had the people to come up who needed jobs. I had an altar call. And I thought maybe 200 people would come up who needed jobs. Half my church mm. came up to the altar and needed jobs. And so... One of the books that I read since then was a book called The Non Nonprofit by Stephen Rothschild. And he talks about a workforce development program that gives people living wages. And part of the, the struggle we had as an urban church is that we had people come and giving their lives to Christ, but didn't have any means to sustain their, their, their life, uh, to make a living, if you will. And so it's been said, if you teach a man how to fish, if you, he'll eat for a lifetime, but what happens if he has no pond? So we decided to zag, to zig, <laughs> in the sense of being a church that focuses on workforce development, helping people to not only learn how to fish, but also giving them a pond, helping them make living wages. And so in this town center concept that we'll have, it'll also be a, a workforce development piece to hopefully give people living wages. Very good. Now, uh, personally, five years ago, where were you? What's happened in your life? Anything else people need to know about you? Since You know, five years ago, I was blowing and going. Um, church was growing. It's still growing. Um, we were probably at our, our peak of growth then. I think now, five years later, um, we're focusing more on discipleship, really trying to raise up leaders. Uh, we've birthed a new congregation uh, in Holly Springs, Mississippi, and um, I had a health scare. Uh, in December, I had adrenal fatigue. I'd been pushing and pushing and pushing and didn't know how much it took out of me to, to pastor a mega church that went from 60 people to over 13,000 in 10 years. And so it took a toll on my body, which caused me to redefine how I lead. And so instead of being real hands-on, I'm more of a visionary. Uh, and I go and share with uh, potential donors, potential partners in our community redevelopment efforts. And so they freed me up to go have those kind of conversations to paint the picture for Eden Square. Um, it's given me time to be more balanced, to spend more time with my family, to make sure I work out and stay in good health because this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. And so I would just caution a lot of the younger pastors you know, when you're younger, you think you're Superman. You can keep running through walls without ever, you know, getting any dents. But we have to realize that it's, it's, a, it's a marathon and not a sprint. Take care of yourself. Balance yourself. So that's been a real big learning point for me. So just for some of the young pastors that are watching, what were the symptoms of adrenal fatigue that you had in your life so that they could, you know, know when they're approaching this point? December, or Christmas Eve, I had heart palpitations. I've never had problems with my heart. You know, I consider myself very athletic. I work out three times a week, gun show. Uh, <laughs> so I go, I go to the, uh, the gym three times a week, and I had heart palpitations. I was short of breath and uh, took my blood pressure. was 200 over something. Whoa. I was at near stroke level. And, um, I, you know, being hard-headed, I went and took some aspirin and laid down. My blood pressure dropped. I went to the heart specialist, took a battery of tests, a treadmill test, the whole nine, went to Canyon Ranch. What I discovered was my cortisol levels were so high, they were eating up my good hormones, and I just crashed. You know, I just crashed. And so the heart palpitation, shortness of breath, high blood pressure. But now I'm not on any blood pressure medicine. I didn't have to take any kind of other alternative medicine. I just focus on working out more, sleeping more. Uh, I go to sleep before 11 p.m. every night because if you don't, it tells your body to stay in fight or flight, which causes you to deplete your good hormone levels. So I, I take a supplement called, uh, what is it, melatonin. I take melatonin because what was happening, Dave, is I was staying up at night thinking about 
What's the next going meeting? on in the church? Uh, yeah, the sermon. I got to, oh, I got to get them right there. My I gotta teenager. Send, I got to send this email. My teenager, all of that stuff was racing through my mind. And the, my doctor told me, she said, you're like a caveman who's listening for the twig to pop so you can jump up and fight the lion. So I was getting about three, four hours of sleep and my testosterone levels were not rebuilding. And so it's very important that you have balance, take care of your health, eat right. Uh, I'm on a gluten-free diet now. Um, watch eating more fruits and vegetables, working out five days a week. And so in order to maintain the level that it takes to pastor a mega church and do all the things I'm doing, I've got to make sure I'm taking care of my health. Absolutely. Okay. Now you know the signs of adrenal fatigue. I hope it doesn't happen to you, but you, that's why every pastor needs a checkup every year, in my opinion. So thanks for joining us, Stacey. We're out here at the What's Next Leadership Community in uh, San Diego today. Uh, so thanks for taking the time to Thank you. record this message.